Raylor Basketball on 96.3 WLCN and WLCNOnline.com is brought to you by Reps Gym, AAA Windows Siding and Doors, The Carpet House, Town & Country Bank, Lincoln IGA, Fist Street Food Mart, Future Stars and Impact Studio Cheerleading and Tumbling, Lincoln Chrysler Dodge Jeep, Rick Ham State Farm Insurance, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Lincoln Printers, Jason Schmidt at Channel Seeds, TCC Verizon Wireless, Timbercrest Veterinary Services, Blades Hair and Nail Salon LLC, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, Brow Incorporated, Schneider Chiropractic, Lincoln College, Big R, Stacy Family Pharmacy, Plute Heating and Cooling, St. Clara's Manor, BB Milling Company, Eaton Corporation, Jane's Hair Salon, Jim Examus Ford Lincoln, Bright Idea Screen Printing and Embroidery, Headline Salon LLC, Family Custom Cleaners, Laundry, Tanning and U-Haul, Memorial Sports Care at Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital, and by Dr. Betsy Ulrich, Sugar Creek Orthodontics. Joe. Uh, we're going to send it down to Joe on the go. So, Joe, wherever you're at, take it away. And we're down here in the dugout, I call it, in the dugout, live with Joe on the go. Hey, our first guest up, they tell us about yourself. Who are you? Uh, John Norman. And, and John, you play some Raider football, right? Yes. And wrestle? Yes. And uh, what do you think of the Raiders? Uh, basketball? Do you know anything about basketball? <laughs> yeah, I played at junior high, Chester East Lincoln, baby. Went to state two years in a row. Well, well, you did? Yes. Well, were you eighth grade? Were you the big man in the middle? I was about the ninth man, I think. <laughs> Coming in, throwing up some late ones, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, who's your favorite Raylor basketball player? Huh. All right, or all time? All time. All time. I got to go with Jerry Clocking Game, my Uncle Jerry. Oh, they, yeah. They went to state a few years in a row. So. Uncle Jerry, that's your favorite. And you're doing some uh, wrestling coaching out here, right? Yeah, helping out with uh, Coach Dietrich and the wrestlers when I can. So. How are they looking? Um, they're, they're looking okay. The grind is uh, pretty tough for them. we got a lot of young kids who are doing wonderful, by the way. So. Good. And here's our last question. Uh, what are you getting for Christmas? Um, hopefully a one-way ticket to the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> one way? You're not coming back? <laughs> well, that probably will. You heard it here live. All right, we're going to jump off. Thanks for being on. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh. We, we got a runner. Come on, we have some rare questions. Hey, Richie, get on. Let's go. So, look, hey. Richie's he's chasing Coach. kids. Oh, oh. They, nobody wants on with Santa. They're running from us. Richie's coming back. He's in. Tell us a little bit. We want to know a few things. First of all, tell us who you are. Rich Jones. Rich Jones. And is this your daughter right here? That is. And she's got some Cub gear on. She's a Cub. True Blue Cub fan. Is she a big Madden fan? Joe Madden? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that what Santa Claus, uh, Santa Claus brought you? What do you think about Cardinal fans? Yeah. Hey, Richie, how long have you been watching uh, Lincoln basketball? How long have you been delivering the mail? Uh, long time, Joe. The postman always delivers. More than half my life. More than half your life, and you're 40 now. Think of Lincoln basketball since 1975. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. Hey, favorite all-time railer? Favorite all-time railer would have to be uh, Matt Block. <laughs> now that was funny! Matt Malakovich, just because he had his picture in the paper. He was, he was the greatest. And he, and he was skinny back then. He still is. No, he's not. He's not real skinny. Hey, hold on, Rich. One more thing. What are you getting for Christmas? Well, I'm kind of hoping I get a freaking vacation free of wife and kids. That would be an awesome Christmas present. Right, kid? Hey, it's not happening. Come on, let's go. Hold on, we got Nitzel. Come on, Nitzel. Come on. Come on, Nitzel. Let's go. Ladies in. Come on, let's talk Raider basketball. Tell them who you are. You don't want to know. Who's your favorite Raider? Alex O'Donoghue. 
Hey, is Big Al going to get on the floor tonight? I don't know. We'll see. He's the Donahue basketball player ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, what about Timmy? Timmy was good. I don't know. Uncle Timmy. Mm, we'll see about that. Yeah, he wasn't a very good basketball no. player. No, he wasn't. But you know what? This one could be. He might even be a better football player when he gets out for that. Ooh, I don't know. Oh, That's yeah. He's thing. he's coming out. Is he? He's coming out for football. We'll see. Hey, and tell us who, who's your all-time, that's your all-time favorite, Raylor? Ooh, I don't know. It's been so long. There's so many. Okay, come on. Raylers or just Raylers? There's not a good one. They're a team. They're a team. Okay, we'll go with that. They're all great. And what do you get for Christmas? Popcorn. Well, you got it then. You already got it. Is that it? Hey, Josh, we're coming back upstairs to you. This has been Joe on the go. Ready for basketball. The opening tip is controlled by Rochester, and they are moving to the basket to our left. Fisher on top to Hanlon. Works it over to Stallworth. Yeah, I remember Fisher, too, from last year, Jeff. Number 24, left-handed, can shoot the basketball from the outside. I know 12 is back. Zach Dan Ziegler, I believe he was a quarterback on that state championship team that uh, won their fifth consecutive. And early on, Rochester gets the basket underneath. So Rochester on the board first. Gavin Block, top of the key, thought about it, didn't take it, got the handoff from Ebelair. Ebelair on the right wing to Gavin. This time he'll fire and yeah. hit. And then no hesitation, and that's what you like to see out of Gavin. Uh, a nice pass, just a swing pass over to Gavin. No hesitation with the shot, caught it, shoot, and usually when he does that, uh, it's in. Minute gone by here in the first quarter. Railers with an early 3-2 advantage. Hanlon goes by everybody, bumps into Gavin, and a blocking foul is going to be whistled on block. And so uh, just 58 seconds in, the senior picks up his first foul. Nice drive by Hanlon. And, Gavin. you know, it, Gavin picking up the first. Hanlon doing a nice job driving to the basket. Um, but part of the problem is he was able to take it from top of the key all the way down the lane, and nobody got in his way. Yeah, somebody didn't uh, come to the basketball and, and attack him and and, uh, and stay in front, and that led to a uh, Gavin Block trying to take a charge. And as you see a little bit this year where the, the referees are a, real, a little more reluctant to call a charge, I mean, there's it seemed like Bulby and Gavin were getting a charge when they tried to take one almost every time last year, and this year Gavin uh, unable to get to a few of those. Hanlon misses the first, makes the second. We are tied at three, 6.50 to go first quarter. Cook hands off to Gavin, now back to Aaron Hopp, swinging around to Perry. Railers working around the perimeter down in the right corner, back on top. Yeah, getting the Railers offense really far from the court. You're looking at uh, five feet beyond the three-point line, so nobody in shooting range. Um, maybe it's trying to open up for, for dribble drives, and, and that time Hop tried to get to the basket, but uh, we, we've got to force the issue a little bit and go into the hoop. Almost didn't recognize Aaron with his haircut. Cook. Free throw line, kicks it out to Perry in the corner. High arcing three, yeah. that was good. And that's what Perry can do. He, he, he can shoot it from the outside. He's just been off this season. So, um, you know, for Jordan, he's got to be able to step in this team and, and knock a couple threes down. Railers up 6-3, six, six minutes to go in the first. And that pass intended for Ziegler. Wasn't ready for it. And he turns it over back to the Railers. Gavin. Has his man, top of the key, three, back of the rim, no. Rebound down to Ziegler. 5.45 left in the first quarter. Railers on top of Rochester, score 6-3. Stallworth on the left wing. Hanlon between the circles, play catch on the left side. Cook comes out on him, now right side to Fisher. Ziegler high post, turns, gets it to Fisher, the lefty three, top of the key on the way, missed it off the left side, Gavin there for the rebound for the Railers. Yeah, good job by Gavin of uh, boxing out and, and going after that rebound. Cross court, Will, corner likes three, his corner, Jeff. good. Yeah, he likes this corner on home games. Yeah, we, right in front of us, uh, Will, you can usually mark it down for uh, for one three from Will in this corner right below us, so good ball movement, found Will, and, and again, Will caught it. And, and went right into that shot. No hesitation, and you talked about earlier in the pregame of just the guys just hesitating to score, hesitating to shoot, hesitating to go to the basket. Uh, none of that right now for the Railers. Railers up 9-3, 5-16 to go in the first. We want to thank our friends at Lincoln College, BB Milling Company, 
St. Clair's Manor and future stars and Impact Studios cheerleading and tumbling for their sponsorship of Railer Basketball this year on 96.3 FM and WLCNOnline.com. And uh, boy, it seems an awful lot like Railer Basketball. Good defense and three threes to get things started. Yeah, yeah, so far defense has been pretty good. Uh, they, they gave away that easy basket on the first possession, but uh, with a couple turnovers, the Railer's defense has forced and, and uh, a couple threes knocked down for the Railers. So good start, uh, but we had a good start against Jacksonville too. Ziegler goes down the lane, finds McClintock as he gets behind the defense. He missed the shot, but a foul is going to be whistled on J.P. Perry picking up his first, and that will send McClintock to the line. He'll be shooting two, and uh, again, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of breakdowns that the Railers coaching staff, I'm sure, can tolerate a little bit, but it's when you get people behind, and McClintock shot up an air bath. Ouch. going to hear that. He's going to hear about that. And the bad thing that happened is he did it right at the right, end of the, yeah, right, the student section. Right where the students are letting him have it right now. So uh, then I guess maybe not a bad foul by Perry, but still the Railer defense not moving uh, to get that uh, easy shot around the hoop. If anybody can ever explain how someone can shoot an air ball on one and then hit nothing but the bottom of the net with the second one, I can't figure <laughs> it out. 4.50 to go here in the first quarter. Railers on top. Nine, four, three threes for the Railers to get things started. Peyton Ebler goes to the basket, kicks it out to hop. Nice quick ball movement for the Railers, trying to find that open shot. Gavin top of the key, hands to Ebler. Ebler pulls up from 15 that's on the way. That's no good rebound to Hamlet. Yeah, but all right, though, uh, Peyton, really aggressive, uh, got to that free throw line where it's a perfect shot for uh, any basketball player. You're straight on, not too far. 15 feet, nice pull-up jumper. Just didn't, uh, just didn't go down. 4:25 to go in the first. Railers up by five. Stallworth in the left corner, watched by Hop, swinging around to Fisher, back to Hamlin. Stallworth brings the dribble between the circle. Railers looking for win number five on the season. Hanlon tried to pull up, but a nice job by Hop as he stepped in the way as that was intended for McClintock. So Hop with a steal. Will Cook corner three. Shot it a little too long, but Ebler gets the rebound, gets it back to Will. Railers swinging around the perimeter. And they will reset at the 350 mark. Gavin. And a foul is going to be whistled on McClintock, trying to keep Gavin from getting to the lane. First on the Rochester Junior, first on the team. Yeah, and the, and the Railers, you like to see, you got that pull-up jumper from, from Evil Era there, but you like to see the Railers try to get to the basket a little bit more. I think Rochester is starting to pressure us outside the three-point line a little bit, and, and we've, got to, we've, we've got to be able to get to the basket. Isaiah Bowers, the freshman, into the lineup for the Railers, replacing Jordan Perry. Railers with the basketball, heading to the basket in front of us. Gavin hands to Ebelair. Peyton at 15. Nope, didn't take it. Over to Hop on the left side. Kicks it over to Gavin. Gavin looks to make a move against McClintock. Kicks back out. Top of the key. Ebelair three. Front of the rim. No. Fight for the rebound. Cook is there. Ball loose. Picked up by Ebelair. Hop didn't take it. Now he's going to drive straight to the basket. And a... Offensive foul is going to be whistled on Hop. Was waiting to see if the official on the baseline was going to make the call. I think they got that one right, Josh, because as Aaron drove, drove through the lane, you could see that left arm come out and extend. Yeah, I put his shoulder down into him a little bit and, and uh, was more of a clean clean uh, charge for uh, that time uh, rather than the one that Gavin tried to take. So the, the good offense by the Railers, though. We got something going to the basket. Approaching the three-minute mark, first quarter. Down in the corner, Stallworth right corner. Three off the front of the rim, no good. Aaron Hop grabs the board. Yeah, nice box out, too, by Will Cook on the uh, backside. That, that shot came off to him. He didn't get the rebound, but Hop. Raylor did. Down the lane, nice ball movement. Will Cook's three is good from the top of the key. Right, when Will steps into it, it's a, a very pretty release. He's got excellent ball rotation. Um, good job by Bowers to get it to Cook. Cook uh, a, a step or two behind the three-point line, and, and uh, right now Will's feeling it pretty well. Over to McClintock, the lefty high-arcing shot looked bad, and the rebound came down to Gavin. Looks ahead, can Hop catch up? He can, left hand, layup yeah, is good. That's what Hoppy can do. He's a, uh, he's a guard, but he plays that back position, and he can outrun a lot of those bigger guys, and that time Hop, almost a home run uh, pass, the quarterback pass from Gavin Block right to Hop. Railers already with a 10-point advantage. It's 14-4, 10-point lead. 
approaching the two minute mark here in the first quarter. Yeah, you see the see the defense picking up a little bit. Coach Hop moving the pressure up and almost almost could have had a uh, 10 second call. They tried to get the ball underneath. It's kicked around a little bit into the hands of Starworth who finds Hanlon in the left corner. He's going to drive by Bowers and has his pocket picked by the freshman and then ahead to Hop behind Woo! the back, saves it. Will Cook had it knocked out of bounds. So nice defense by Rochester. But boy, again, lots of credit yeah. for that save in bounds. Yeah, great action there. Uh, uh, Hop came to save it on a bad pass, threw it, flipped it behind the back to Cook. Cook went in, but a nice re nice rejection by Stallworth. But again, the Raiders starting to get out on the uh, break and try and get some easy easy baskets. Minute 40 to go in the first quarter. Ebeler had his guy fall down, so Will Cook will fire another three. Spins off no good. Ball loose, and there's Ebeler in between three rockets, gets it. And then it's Fisher who reaches in, forces the held ball, and it will stay with the Railers. But again, good hustle from the Railers. Ebeler goes in amongst the Rockets, gets it, comes out with it. And then Will uh, just, uh, I don't think he saw the defender come from behind, tie him up as he uh, he will head to the bench. And you just see the Railers moving a little bit. You know, Ebeler a little more active than he was Saturday. There, another offensive rebound he's picked up. Uh, he's scrapping around for uh, another possession that the Railers uh, just keep. You saw that from Jacksonville the other night where they just kept getting that possession on offensive rebounds. And now the Railers uh, doing it a little bit themselves. Minute 20 to go. Ebeler in the lane, kicks back out to Gavin. Gavin, nice move. Thought about a pull-up. Kicks it over to K.J. Fry in the lineup for the first time. Back to Hop. 17-footer sure. on the way. Left it way short, and Aaron fired up an air ball. Yes. Not sure if it got tipped or if it was just a... Uh, just a bad shot. Or, just, you know, just a bad shot. Or whatever. But, it, but it wasn't a bad shot. The result was bad. But again, Aaron Hop gets to the free throw in on two dribble pull-ups. Uh, Right-handed guys love to dribble left and pull up and uh, come back and shoot it with their right. So it was a good shot. Uh, the result just didn't uh, didn't come. But you just you just hate to see Aaron's confidence go down because of a shot like that. Keep, keep doing the same thing. Under a minute to go. Railers with a 14- four advantage in the first quarter. They turn. Ziegler, 15-footer, missed it. Rebound by McClintock. Nice, strong move off the glass and in. Yeah, you can tell McClintock's been on the football field a little bit. Uh, well built. Ebeler goes strong, flips it up, won't go down, but Peyton will go to the line, and he will be shooting too. So we talked about it, and we've seen a little bit more aggressiveness. Even if it's not with the shot, Ebeler driving to the basket and making them be honest because, remember, his first shot was he drove in and took that from 15 feet. Didn't make it, but at least they know he's willing to take it. Yeah, yeah, and they've got to... They've got to uh they got to go at him, and that time uh, they keep going at him, and then Peyton gets to uh, maybe gets to the basket for a couple layups because he's taking some outside jump shots. So uh, Ebeler, a different player tonight uh, as he misses both free throws, but he's a different player than he was Saturday. We're getting a little more out of him tonight. Railers come in just a 63% free throw shooting team, uh, certainly uh, not as the Railers have generally been, and they start out tonight missing their first two. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Lincoln 14, Rochester 6. Yeah, I was just looking at Stallworth, 6'5 and a sophomore. Uh, good size, good length to him. He hasn't looked offensive yet, but he's got a uh, good body for a sophomore. We're down to six seconds. Rochester's going to have to start looking for a shot. Fisher, top of the key, into McClintock. I'm not sure they're going to get a shot off. McClintock turns, and it rattles good. At the buzzer, McClintock's basket brings him a little bit closer. At the end of one, it is Lincoln, 14, Rochester, 8. We'll be back with the second quarter in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. Back for Railer Basketball. Thanks in part to Jim Examas, Ford Lincoln, Rick Ham, State Farm Insurance, and Family Custom Cleaners, Laundry, Tanning, and U-Haul. We get ready to start the second quarter of action with the Railers on top, 14-8. But, uh, Josh, really for Rochester, it's been Matt McClintock, the 6'3 junior. He has seven of their eight points. Yeah, nothing pretty either. Shots, uh, not exactly what you draw up on the board, but it's gone in for the Railers. They shoot four of eight from the three-point line, so that's what uh, has kept the Railers uh, ahead right now is the uh, the hot shooting. Fishers three, no good. Comes down to the hands of Will Cook. Looks ahead to Aaron Hop. Back to Will. There's Peyton, top of the key. Drives in, kicks back out. Will Cook three. Missed it off the right side badly. Yeah, I think Will knew it as soon as he shot it. He was going for that rebound. So uh, that's travel. Uh, didn't have the didn't have the grip. It looked like on the basketball to uh, to shoot it like he has been so far this game. Rochester finally gets it into the front court. Down low to McClintock. Goes up over Gavin off the glass and in McClintock with nine. It's six in a row for Rochester and they've climbed within four. Yeah, nine of the ten. Gavin hands to Bowers. 
Gavin thought about pulling up, tried to kick it out, and they're going to say it was last touched. Yep, they're going to say it was touched by Rochester. Boy, kind of dangerous. It almost seemed like Gavin was going to go for the shot. The Railers went to the, the basket, and then when he kicked it out, there was nobody there. Yeah, Gavin really looking, uh, uh, not not looking to go to the basket at all. It's a, it's a two-dribble pull-up and a pass or something. I think he's got... Uh, He's yeah, definitely got experience on stalwart as a sophomore going against a senior, but he's got to uh, got to put his head down a little bit and get to the rim. 6.50 to go in the first half. Lincoln on top, 14-10. As you would expect, Lincoln in a low-scoring affair. Cook on top to Gavin. There he is, top of the key, 4-3. Got it. Yeah, when you leave him that wide open, he's going to knock it down. And, and now, they, now that he's hit a couple threes, uh, not that they don't know that he can shoot, but they've got to they got to commit. they got to start running at Gavin, and Gavin's got to do a better job of, of getting to the basket. He's uh, too long and too big uh, to not, not go shoot layups, or, or if he's not getting layups, he's going to the free throw line. Back out to Fisher. He's going to take it down the lane with the reverse lap. No good. Gavin with a strong rebound. Gavin had it knocked away from behind. Ball loose. That's picked up by Rochester. Ziegler fakes pass it up, and we've got an offensive foul as Gavin stepped in the way of that one. And Ziegler will pick up his first, second on the team. Ziegler, after the contact, walked away shaking his head. He didn't think so. Good for the Railers that he yeah. picked up the foul, but it's dangerous because you're looking at Gavin picking up his second if yeah. they call the, the block. Yeah, you're right, and, and Gavin uh, right there with Will Cook and basically leading the Railers in scoring, so there's uh, there's no way we can go without him. Back door, Will gets his defenders up in the air. Everybody looks like they're okay. As a nice uh, head fake by Will Cook will send the senior to the line. Shooting to the foul is going to go on Hanlon. That'll be his first third on the team. And Cook will go to the line shooting two, an 83% free throw shooter on the season. You know, I was kind of wondering about that, and, and I was going to ask you, and their coaches, their coaches arguing this a little bit, but he wasn't really shooting. He, he went up to shoot and, and didn't make it to jump or anything. So actually, I thought about thought that should, foul should have been on the floor, and their coaches arguing it a little bit also. Uh, you know, his intent was going to be to shoot it, but a guy jumped on his back, and he never did really get off the floor to, to make an attempt to shoot. I'm sure Will will tell you he's oh, going to. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll take the free throws any day. Will makes them both. It's 19-10. Nice job by Ebler as he knocked it away. Kicks it into the backcourt, and it's picked up by Bowers, who hands the block, and the Railers force another turnover. Five and a half to go. Lincoln up. Nice move by Hop. Looking to go baseline. Cut out by Fisher. Down the lane. Bowers tried to do a back pass to Cook. Had it tipped away. Railers pick it back up. Gavin steps into a three, and it's oh, good. Yeah, good hustle by the Railers and good unselfish passing by the Railers. Just keep finding it, finding it, finding it, and they find Gavin on the wing. And uh, anytime Gavin's that wide open, we just said it, he's going to knock it down. Another timeout taken by Rochester. 5.20 to go. Railers up 12. Back in a moment with more Lincoln Railer basketball. Back at Roy S. Anderson Gymnasium, 5.20 to go in the first half. Lincoln on top, 22-10. And Josh, uh, with that three-pointer, uh, Gavin Block uh, has now hit 121 in his career. That moves him into a tie for 11th place all-time with Jeremy Bruce. Mm -hmm. Good shooter, former Railer. Uh, probably several years older than, uh, than I am, I'm guessing. Uh, 25 then, so... Uh, <laughs> So after the second timeout taken in the game by Rochester, they see themselves down by 12. They cut it as much as close as four at 14-10, but the Railers have run off eight in a row. Hamlin yeah. being watched by Hop. And Rochester has not had a couple of uh, good possessions lately. The Railers doing a good job. As you can see, just see the pressure turned up for, for the Railers, Jeff. Uh, they're moving a lot better. They're getting out on shooters. Uh, they're, they're really attacking the guys that uh, have the ball and attacking the dribblers, making them putting it on the floor. Ziegler, top of the key, is going to drive the lane, pull it from 10 feet, and hits. That's a little easy. After you, you've let them dribble it around for 20 or 30 seconds, and they get in the middle, and they turn around and shoot a 8-footer, uh, all your hard work. Bowers at the high post. Hands back to Gavin. Over to Hop on the far side. Four and a half to go in the first half. Lincoln enjoying a 10-point lead. Ebeler back to Gavin, tries another one. No good, but he's going to go to the line shooting three as Gavin got fouled by Handlin. Now and send, send Gavin to the free throw line on the, uh, on the season. Gavin Buck shooting 
68% from the uh, free throw line, something you expect Gavin to improve on as the year goes on. First one up. That's no good. Railers now two of five on the night from the free throw line. The senior second one. That one's good. Gavin now in double figures with 10. Adam Schwartz checks in. Uh, another player, Rochester, playing the make the announcers guess the name game with players out there without uniforms on the lineup card. Nice. You Gavin, always love that. Gavin gets the second one. So two out of three. Railers have doubled up Rochester. It's 24-12. Trap. McClintock does not look comfortable handling the basket now. Uh, Will Cook's giving them uh, giving him some pressure too. Ziegler. Kicks it over to Schwartz, and he hit, lost it right into the hands of Gavin Block, who tripped and fell, but kicked it ahead to Will. Will over to Hop, off the glass, nice. and in. Nice hesitation by Aaron. Yeah, you're exactly right. Good break. Gavin stole it, got tripped up, got it over to Cook. Cook to Hop, and Hop did a good job of ball faking, got his guy up in the air, and got it in for an easy layup. So good, uh, good steal and a good conversion when you can turn steals into points. And then a 10 count. You know, Jeff, here's a time where you're up 26 to 12, you're up 14 points, three minutes and 30 seconds. You can you can kind of blow this thing open and, and really uh, put the nail, I guess, in the coffin, if you want to say, or you can keep them right in at this point. This is a game where Rochester's still in it, down 14, and you can make this a, you know, a 20, 22-point lead going into half, or you can let them back in it and, and keeping them at 10 or, or 8. Hop tries to drive the lane and instead back out right wing three yeah. for Will Cook is good again. Well, well from deep too, you know, he's been uh, out from the suburbs here a little bit in Lincoln, but uh, not on the line at all, and they're, and they're not yet to come out and get Will. He's, uh, he's shot, shot some, uh, some clear three so far. 29-12 with three minutes to go. Cook with 11, Gavin with 11. So Ziegler will try a three. That's no good. Stallworth with the rebound over Will. Rochester keeps possession. Ziegler's going to drive the lane. Spins. Tosses it up and good. Well, i got to say his two baskets have not been the prettiest, no. but they're effective. They're going in, and that, uh, that keeps uh, Rochester right at that 15-point mark. Two and a half to go in the first half. Lincoln up 29-14. Gavin against McClintock blows right past him, kicks it over to Will, and he tried to kick it back out, but the pass was stolen. Then Will gets it right back. Hop, baseline, goes up strong off the yeah. glass and in. Got a boy hop, and he goes to the basket. That's what you love. He went to the basket, baseline, and Gavin was even open here in the corner, but what I like, he's went to the basket. He finished the layup. He shot a layup instead of kicking the basketball out and uh, got a lot more high percentage shot. Two minutes, two minutes left in the first half. Lincoln at 31, Rochester 14. Lincoln with a 17 point advantage. Over in the far side to McClintock. Stallworth, minute 50 going. Almost a travel by Rochester. Ziegler, top of the key, tries to penetrate, but the Railer defense is not going to let that happen. No, they're just not uh, not real confident in their, in their basketball. Yeah, dribbling in the Railer defense is, is part of that reason. They're really moving. You can see Ebelair and Cook really starting to, uh, to get gassed. Ziegler, three, no good. Gavin with the rebound. Aaron Hop sneaks out in front of everybody and lays it up and in. Yeah, Jeff, we started to see a little bit of that in the second half of that Jacksonville game where, where uh, Hop, Hoppy would leak out and kind of rely on Gavin to get that rebound, and, and a good thing he did because uh, Hop was down there wide open. Fisher off the glass, no good. Gavin, another rebound. We approach a minute to go. Lincoln trying to build their lead to plus 20. Will Cook's uh, three spun off, no oh, good. There, there was your nail right there. Under a minute, 50 seconds left. And then a blocking foul is going to be whistled on Jordan Perry. And, you know, it seems that if anybody's going to get called for a foul for just the slightest contact, it's, it's always Perry. It's been Perry this season, and that's two on Perry, and Coach is going to keep him out here with 53 seconds left. But you see Will kind of tugging on his shorts, E. Blair tugging on his shorts a little bit. They've moved the pressure up, and uh, it's gotten to the uh, conditioning part for the Railers. 40 seconds left. Will Rochester hold for the final shot. Play and catch out front. Stallworth now brings a dribble to the far side. Watched by Ebelair. Oh, 
You know, usually early in the season, in the first seven or eight games, we've always got one of those halftime buzzer beaters from half court or something. Maybe we'll get one here tonight. Yeah, we need a steal. Big big turnover here and not let them score and, and go into a uh, go into halftime with a comfortable lead. Down to 12 seconds. Lincoln up 33-14. Fisher backs up. Not sure if I'd be backing up with the time uh, ticking down. Ziegler in the corner. Tries to dribble through. Looked like he almost walked. Fisher fires it up. It's on the way. In and out. No good. Gavin the rebound. And that's where our first half will end. At the end of the first half, it is Lincoln 33. Rochester 14. We'll be back with our halftime show. The Grow Incorporated and Schneider Chiropractic Center halftime show in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball. 